The Moto 360 gets a price cut. The podcasting patent is a bust. And you won't believe how one man feels about not ordering the Apple Watch. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. It's time for Twit's annual audience survey, and we want to hear from you. Please visit twit.tv slash survey and let us know what you think. It only takes a few minutes, and your anonymous feedback will help us make Twit even better. We thank you so much for your continued support. Twit.tv slash survey. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 314 for Friday, April 10th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. Welcome. I am Megan Maroney at 12.01 last night. One could pre-order an Apple Watch, but did one? This one did not. Joining us today is Harrison Weber, millennial New Yorker, news editor at Venture Beat, and proud non-owner of the new Apple Watch. Welcome, Harrison. Hey, thanks for having me. So what do you like best about not buying the Apple Watch last night? Uh, well, probably not having to wait until June to get it. Right, that's what they're saying now. Most people, uh, unless you were one of the first, you're going to have to wait till summer, right? Exactly. So un unless you, you know, you stayed up night, stayed up late, happened to uh, get lucky, or you know, uh, be patient enough, clicking around the Apple site, uh, it, the delays are now stretched out quite far. At one point, I saw uh, what looked like until August, but now it looks like the latest is June. Right. Yeah. So for us on the West Coast, it was twelve oh one. For you guys, it was much later. Obviously. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think it took six hours for all the models of the Apple Watch to sell out. Um, that means that they the, the April 24th delivery, that was sold out, correct? Is that what they mean by yeah, that? Yeah, the, the first batch uh, has definitely sold out. I, sold out is, is kind of a, an interesting term for it because it's really just when you're going to get it. Uh, you can still buy one, and you could never not buy one from what I saw. Uh, but that first batch has... Uh, clearly sold out. Right. And Apple, of course, is not saying this was due to high demand or low supply. Um, which do you think it is? Uh, it could be a little bit of both. I think this is not at all like the case of the Microsoft ban where they didn't they didn't manufacture enough uh, to meet the demand, despite the fact that there was probably very little demand for it. Uh, so it always looks good to sell out. And, you know, I mean, Apple wants to make money. They want to get this thing in people's hands. And so I, I I feel like they have the, the capacity to, to produce a lot, uh, but I have no idea what that, you know, what the actual batch sizes are. All right. So you say you're not going to buy one. Are you going to go in for one of the appointments to try on, or are you just going to wait for the next one? Sure. Well, you know, I, I'm, I come from a very specific, very specific perspective uh, on this because, you know, I'm a reporter and I play with gadgets all the time. Uh, I'm very curious about Apple's strategy here. I'm very curious about the whole experience that Apple has, the whole try-on experience. I think that's really, really interesting. I am not, you know, personally interested in, in dropping, you know, the kind of cash uh, that they're asking for on one of these things. Uh, but I'll definitely go in and try it out. Right. So now you wrote a piece today about how the Moto 360 got a big price break. Um, it's 179. Is that what it is today? Yeah, yeah. It was when it first launched. It was uh, last year. It was two fifty, so still cheaper than the the cheapest Apple Watch, which is three forty nine. Uh, but now it's at one seventy nine at its lowest, and so you know that's way cheaper than the Apple Watch. Should you get one? That's a whole other question. So you you don't have one, I'm assuming. Uh, well, I, I've I've definitely played with one uh, and spent time for uh, you know a review unit, but. You know, I mean, I think one of the things, and we'll get to get to why this is, is happening, but like, uh, you know, Motorola is working on the next iteration. Uh, but this watch, this is the watch that didn't have the screen that went all the way around. There's like a little part that cuts off at the very bottom. It's hard to kind of envision, but basically it's not a perfectly round screen, but the watch is round. And so this is, you know, uh, for some people it's compelling if you're hardcore Android user, maybe it is, but it's not compelling to me, and that's probably why they're trying to um, get rid of some inventory. 
Right. Now, are you, do you have, use an iPhone regularly or do you use an Android phone? iPhone. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they say that they might be developing an app that could work, make the, you know, Android Wear work with the iPhone. But, I mean, whether that app will be accepted into the Apple Store will be another story. So, you know, it's interesting. Do you wear a watch at all? Uh, well, I wear a Fitbit, mm. uh, which is what I like because it does that one thing. Right. And I only want a watch for the time and the health purpose. So, you know, I mean, again, uh, Maybe, maybe as the Apple Watch evolves, it'll definitely be something that I will be kind of itching to buy the next iteration, the next one after that. Just like the iPhone. The iPhone was great when it launched, but it had a lot of flaws. And so this is probably the same exact thing. Uh, but it, it is kind of a tough sell. It's an expensive product, and it, it's, uh, Apple's going to get the early adopters. Apple's going to get the people who want to push you know, that status symbol forward. Uh, but for the rest of us, you know, we'll have to kind of wait and see if it's really worth the investment. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because the cheapest one is cheaper than an iPhone. But what I've heard a lot of people say is, like, I don't want the cheapest one. It looks like the cheapest one, I think. I don't. Were you the one that said it looks like a, an iPhone 5 or an iPhone 4S? Was that? I called it, I, I called the, the one that I could get, I called it the iPhone 5C of watches. <laughs> and, and that's what it, I mean, that's what it is. It kind of even looks like it. You know, yeah. the colors are kind of goofy and fun, even though Tim Cook really likes his. You know, I mean, it's, it's cool. It, it's kind of dorky. But it's kind of cool. And, and you know, I'm, I feel just kind of, you know, I'm even surprised about just how passive I feel. I'm not, I'm not compelled. I'm not, I'm not disgusted. I'm just feeling kind of middle of the road uh, passive about these devices for now. Right. And how did you feel about the iPad when it came out five years ago? Oh, so this is a great time to make me look like I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> great. Uh, because I was not into the iPad when it first launched. Uh, I was one of the people who made fun of the name. Everyone made fun of the name. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm totally happy to be proven wrong about this. I still don't. I own an iPad. I do not use it because I'm just so glued to my laptop because of the kind of job I have. And so I don't, I still don't, I get why the iPad blew up, I, but I don't in a way because it just doesn't fit into my lifestyle. Right. Well, I mean, you're also not saying, like, I'll never get an Apple Watch. I mean, you very clearly said, I'll get the next one. So what is it about the next one that you think you want? Will, or will it just be, like, you'll need it more in a few years? Or you'll have earned more in the few years and be able yeah, to spend more? Yeah, I mean, it could, it, could, it could be anything. Right now, the value add is, is it's fun. It's fun to play with a new gadget. Uh, it looks cool. You get to try a new experience. Maybe you're on the, the leading edge of, of that kind of ecosystem. This isn't the same thing as the original iPhone because, you know, developers are going to be in there from the beginning. But I guess it's just one of those things where it's a real investment. And so personally, I mean, obviously we're going to have some at, the, at our offices. We'll play with them uh, and we'll, we're reviewing them. Um, but as far as me personally, uh, I'd rather let them get the kinks out and, and just kind of watch and, and, and develop an opinion over time like that. All right. That makes sense. So you had another piece in Venture Beat about how the new Kindle uh, – Kindle app for Android update targets kids and more specifically parents who of kids who want their kids to read more. Um, what's new in this update? Yeah, so we're getting two, uh, for people who, who use Android uh, devices, uh, they're getting two new features that were previously Kindle only, which is pretty interesting. It's a, it kind of takes away the sell of the Kindle, but these, these two features, WordWise and popular highlights, as, as Amazon calls them, uh, definitely target parents. They definitely target kids or people learning English, people who are not native English speakers. Um, but yeah, they're, they're kind of just two nifty features if you are you know, a heavy reader and you have already bought into the Kindle ecosystem, you'll definitely get something out of it. Right, what does WordWise do exactly? Yeah, WordWise just automatically displays definitions for you for words it thinks you might not know, which can be a little condescending if you're a kid uh, or if you're, you know, you're coming at this from a perspective of, of, I don't know this language that well, help me out. It's great. It's a great little function. I've used it before uh, on the Kindle device. I haven't used it on Android yet. And uh, I definitely found it handy. And, and, and the other thing that is, is useful about it that I pointed out in my story was just simply that if you're reading a book that's, you know, 100 years old or older, they're just going to be words that aren't common. And so it's, it, it's a nice... You know, if they, they expand the functionality to cover those words, uh, it would be nice for, like, archaic terms, too. 
Right. I definitely like it for adults. For kids, I, I have some issues. It's one of those things where you see technology sort of messing in a place that it might not work. I mean, with, with my kids, with reading, it's like that's how you tell if a book is your level. You read it, you know, the kids read it through. I mean, you remember when you were little, and it's if there's more than five words that you don't understand, it's, you know, the book's too much for you. So I just wonder if, a you know, a, a, a tool like this is going to stop kids from just – you know, knowing, you know, reading books that are too, you know, too, too up a level for them, or if it's also going to stop kids um, from figuring out words by context, which is, you know, how we all did it back in the day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think we're definitely going to see something interesting with all the kids growing up with iPads uh, and just that whole interaction, that whole concept of, of learning by, by intelligently, you know, you know, trying to predict what words you might not know. Like the value of that you know, uh, Amazon says it's great. I totally believe that they think it's great or that they want me to think it's great. Um, you know, and, and, and it does serve a purpose. Right. As far as like it changing education, that's a whole nother thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, we were, we're scared of all new technology in the beginning and, you know, turns out we're still all alive, right? <laughs> yep. Yep. Sure. So Harrison, thank you so much. Harrison Weber is the news editor at Venture Beat. You can catch up with him on Twitter at Harrison Weber. Thank you so much for joining me, Harrison. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Take care. Coming up, new deets on Beats. And finally, a way to impress friends and family with your fake mad hacking skills. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Lynda.com. Lynda.com is for problem solvers, for the curious, for people who want to make things happen. Lynda.com is great for anyone entering the workforce for the first time, switching careers, or just trying to stay current on their skills. Now, I know a lot of graphic designers who are also parents. It's a great job to do in those stolen moments when your kids are at school or napping or too old to want to spend time with you anymore. Depending on how long you've been away from the field, you might want to get a refresher course to strengthen your skills. Some of the courses I recommend for designers are logo design techniques, the foundations of graphic design history, and the creative quick tips series. Each week, Justin Seeley guides you through a five-minute self-contained tutorial that you can use to instantly improve your design workflow in Photoshop, Illustrator, WordPress, and more. With a lynda.com membership, you can stream thousands of video courses on demand, complete with transcripts, which allow you to follow along or search for an answer and skip to that point in the video. Your lynda.com membership gives you unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for one flat rate. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, try lynda.com slash TN2 and sign up for your free 10-day trial. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. And we thank them for their support. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. The Apple Watch was not the only product released today. The Samsung Galaxy S6 and the S6 Edge went on sale in the U.S. this morning. Also went on sale in South Korea, Europe, India, and many other places around the world where they hope to make a big splash. Now in many places you can walk right into a store and buy an S6 and take it home with you today. You do not have to wait till June. You don't even need an appointment. The S6 Edge has more limited availability, so you might not walk away with one of those today, but I can almost guarantee that you'll get it before most people get their Apple Watches. Now, we've talked about the S6 several times since it was announced last month in Barcelona. Leo gave a review on Before You Buy just a little while ago. It's a beautiful phone, and anyone interested in virtual reality with the newest Gear VR will want one, but will it be enough to change the minds of enough iPhone fans to matter? We will see. The Electronic Frontier Foundation reports that the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office invalidated key claims on the part of personal audio, the folks who don't make podcasts, or really anything for that matter, but claim to own the patent for podcasting. The FF says that this is a key win, but the battle is not over yet. The so-called patent for podcasting has been in the news since 2013, when patent troll personal audio began demanding licensing fees, and the EF EFF started a crowdfunded campaign to defend podcasting. Now, according to Bloomberg News, unnamed sources say that Apple has asked Florence and the Machine, Taylor Swift, and other artists for exclusives on their Beats music platform, which is scheduled to relaunch this summer with no free ad-supported tier. Beats will cost $9.99 per month for the regular subscription plan and a $14.99 per month for a family plan. Now, the family plan is great for anyone who currently plays, pays for Beats and gets frustrated when it stops working on your iPhone at work because your 12-year-old daughter has just come home from school and started listening to Megan Trainer on her Android phone at home. 
Bloomberg, however, is not convinced that anyone but me will flock to the new Beats service, pointing out that it's $120 per year, which is triple what the average person spends on iTunes per year. But it is also one-third of the price of the cheapest Apple Watch. And finally, a fun website for you to amaze your friends and relatives with this weekend. Geek Typer lets you code or hack like they do in the movies. Just go to geektyper.com, choose a theme, and you can make the site full screen and then start smashing the keys on your keyboard in any fashion you would like. You're not really doing anything except triggering the site to bring up lines of very impressive looking code. Geek Typer lets you pretend you're logging into the mainframe of a giant umbrella corporation to uncover the malicious secrets of their so-called legal genetic research. Or you can pretend to infiltrate the systems of the FBI, like that weird guy with the gerbil on House of Cards. And I also recommend Plain Terminal to pretend you're Matthew Broderick in War Games. Or you can choose the Matrix theme because everyone knows that you never send a human to do a machine's job. Also, I know Kung Fu. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash tn2. You can write to us at tn2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. Don't miss our morning, morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.